Hello and welcome to the inaugural episode of whatever I decide to call this series. I haven't actually picked out a name yet, so whatever the video was called you just clicked on, that's going to be the name of the series. But this is going to be all about art critiques, because I get a lot of people sending me work and they want feedback and advice on how to make their renders better. Unfortunately, I can't really justify spending time replying to everybody with a really in-depth reply. So what I thought would be cool is if I started making a series of art critique videos. Then I can spend more time on each reply and give a really detailed answer. And it benefits everyone in my audience because you all get to see the advice rather than it just going to one person who asked the question. So a couple of days ago, I put the call out and said, if you want to send me your renders for critique, send them over here. And the people did. People sent me their works. I'm going to take a look at those today. If you want to send me your work for the next episode of this, which will probably be in two weeks time, I'm going to have all the details about how you can do that later on in this episode. So stay tuned for that. But until then, let's get cracking and start looking at some renders. Okay, so this render was submitted by Alexandru and he said, Hello, I've been trying to make my bedroom as realistic as possible. Please give me tips on how I can improve this. Well, first of all, Alexandru, this is not a bad render at all. If you're going for realism, at a glance at least, this looks fairly realistic. My main criticism of this would be that it's quite a boring render. It looks a bit like a hotel room. There's not a lot going on. In general, if you're trying to make a bedroom scene look realistic, what I find is it really helps to make it look lived in. That means adding things like electrical sockets on the walls, light switches, phone chargers, decorations, artwork, paintings on the wall, photographs, things that people actually have in a bedroom that like otherwise it just looks kind of like a hotel room or a showroom or something like that. Secondly, the colours that I've used here are very, very muted. This is a really neutral, like low contrast scene. If we just duplicate this image and even if I just use like auto colour in Photoshop, automatically this looks better. It looks kind of like an early morning render to me. So maybe if we went in with the colour balance and just up the yellows a little bit, probably in like the highlights and in the shadows maybe a little bit. So you would get that really nice warm early morning scene. It would really help the render quite a lot I think. I mean if we just look at the difference those are two tiny tweaks and I think it makes the render look a lot better. In terms of your materials they're actually pretty nice. I think it's quite obvious what most of the materials are. The curtains look very good, the, uh, the like translucency, the transmission of that with the light coming through, that looks great. You've got like the uh, the fabric, which looks great, the same as the fabric on the bed sheets here. I like these little creases that you've added onto the bed sheets, but I would add a lot more of those. I mean, in general, even like in the military, you're never going to get beds that are this well made. You're going to see more creases and more like roughed up areas. I would also recommend that you take another look at these corners because there's some weird, I don't know what exactly is happening here, but there's some weird jagged areas and there's actual holes in the meshes. So you might want to just take a look at cleaning that up because that straight away I noticed that there was like some weirdness happening over here. So you want to fix that. From a realism point of view as well, what you might want to also look at is the height of the camera. If you take a look at a website like House, H-O-U-Z-Z.com. It has loads of um, interior pictures on there taken by like really good photographers. And something you'll notice about every single bedroom scene is that the camera is roughly at head height. The camera in your scene has been taken from like, this looks like a, a table. So someone would have to be standing on that table with the camera almost at the ceiling, pointing it down at the bed. Why would you do that? Like instantly your brain thinks, oh, that's not a real picture because you don't see pictures taken from this height. What I like to do in Blender is I actually use the measuring tool and I measure out the height of the camera. As long as it's somewhere between about 1.4 meters and about two meters, if everything's built a real world scale, then usually that'll look about right. What I would probably recommend is that you move the camera completely if you had the camera coming at this scene from like this sort of view, so then the bed was to the side of the render instead of being the focal point right in the middle, that would help because at the moment, all of this is just plain white 
and all of this is just plain white there's a lot of your render that's just taken up by one plain color and it makes for a very boring image so if you put those little tweaks in add some more details improve the colors of your scene i think you'll be well on your way to making a very realistic render because this is a good starting point you've done some really good work so far Okay, so this second render here came from Anish and he said, I'm an amateur and this took more time to render than to actually make the scene. I think we've all been there, Anish. Even if you don't select mine, can you still give me some tips on rendering on a low spec device, e.g. laptops with a MX150 GPU, especially volumetrics. P.S. Love your videos. Keep them coming. Thanks very much, Anish. Um, yeah, so I'll just acknowledge the second part of what you said first. Rendering volumetrics takes a long time, unfortunately. There's nothing much you can do about that in cycles. What you can do is potentially use Eevee. If your laptop will run Eevee and run it well, the volumetric system in Eevee actually sometimes looks more... It doesn't look more realistic than cycles, but it sometimes looks better, frankly, than cycles, and it's much faster and it's much more efficient. So you definitely want to take a look at volumetrics in Eevee. For a scene like this especially, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't render this in Eevee. It, this is the sort of thing it's perfect for. Um, so let's talk about your actual render here. First of all, I'm just going to say this is very, very cool. I really like this render. It's one of my favorites that was submitted this week. Um, you've got this kind of War of the Worlds inspired like robot creature. And there's this tentacle thing coming over here. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be Earth or like an alien planet. But this looks really cool. It's like it grabbed my attention straight away. It does have a few issues, however, that you want to work on from a technical point of view and from like an art point of view. So first of all, one of the main problems I think you've got here is with lighting. A lot of the lighting doesn't really make sense. Like you've got this big, strong red light over here. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be like the sun or whether it's a separate light. I would have said it's the sun normally, but you also have a very similar color light over here. So maybe this is like something else casting the light. You have no highlights at all on this object. I would try and add some sort of key light over here to like highlight some of these areas. I think just bringing that out from the background even more would look very cool. A lot of the lights though just don't make sense. Like you have this big blue light here, but there doesn't seem to be anything casting a blue light on the scene. That makes renders look unrealistic straight away. We all use little lights places where it doesn't quite make sense to cheat it. But when you have a very, very strong floodlight like this blue light, there should be a source for that blue light and you don't have that in the render. Same thing over here. We have this strong yellow light over here. But I don't know what the source of that light is. This light here is pointing this direction. And this one seems to be pointing kind of down here it doesn't really seem to be pointing straight at the camera so i don't know what's casting this light um from a composition point of view i would possibly consider cropping this image if you look at other pictures like if you google for instance war of the worlds and you look at some of the concept art and things for the movies and books and various other things that's been out about that they what they tend to do is make these sorts of creatures look as intimidating as possible by making them really big, placing the camera very low and having it looking up at this huge creature. So you could probably get away with maybe cropping this image, um, something like this, right? And uh, you might even consider like increasing the size of this creature. So like, if we just copy and paste this, and make it even bigger so it's like a really intimidating like filling up the whole scene that could look really cool um what i would also maybe consider is having this light here instead of just having it sort of point off to nowhere using this light to highlight something like you have this light down here so what could be cool is if you let's just get the uh the selection tool here if you maybe had the light pointing down at something and if we paint in some of this light this is probably going to look crap but let's say if we just paint in some of the lights here and then you could maybe have these tentacles 
coming out of the water so they're sort of being highlighted by this light almost like that's the focus point that this thing is aiming at or something like that it's something to consider um you just want to play around with the composition but the composition that you've got right now isn't terrible to be honest i'll just go back to the way you had it because the other thing that you might want to consider doing just like i said with the last render is maybe playing around with some of the different uh tonalities and things like straight away there if i just auto tone this now this creature is really popping from the background right just by adding this little backlight here and you get these harsh highlights around the side I think that would make for a really interesting image if you could just get these creatures to pop a little bit more from the background. So I hope you found that one helpful in niche. This render here was sent on by Christopher and he said, started using Blender late January and quickly got hooked on ArchViz for some reason. Been constantly trying to improve over the last two months and your videos have been very handy so thank you for that. This is my latest and probably best render so far. It's by no means perfect and there are definitely things to improve. Would like your take on the render. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Christopher. Um, this is a really nice piece of work, especially for someone who's only been using Blender since January. This is really impressive work. I've done a lot of, I do a lot of ArchViz stuff myself. I know how much work goes into a scene like this. Um, this actually looked familiar to me when I saw it. So I went through and did some searching and I found this image, which I assume is what you've based this image on. And I think you can learn a few things just by looking at um, your reference image here. First of all, this reference image is also a render. This isn't a photograph, it's not actually a real place. But in terms of composition, you're a little bit stuck. You can't really change the composition very much when you're basing your work on a photograph that already exists, right? But, you need to think about like where your eyes are flowing constantly. What I always think about in terms of composition is where your eyes been taken here. Cause right now this takes up a huge amount of space and it's sort of pointing this direction, but there's nothing really over here. There's this little desk thing. Is this a desk? It's like a desk with a tiny chair. I would recommend you just get rid of these because it, your eyes have been drawn over here and then you have to kind of squint to figure out what this is. I just wouldn't bother with it. I would take it out and I would probably consider, if I just copy this, I'd consider maybe just cropping the whole image, something like this, and getting rid of all of that stuff that was off to the side, because I think it's just distracting. Secondly, this, um, this sofa looks a little bit small. And if we compare it to the reference image, you can see this is actually much bigger. The camera seems to be slightly lower down as well, which does make it look larger. Um, the other thing that you might want to work on is these steps seem ridiculously small. There's standard sizes for steps. When you have a masonette sort of apartment like this, yeah, you might have to cram steps in a little bit. But these these stairs would be an absolute nightmare to walk on, if, especially if you have big clown feet like I do. I wouldn't be able to walk up those stairs, especially if I'd had a bigger, I would have no chance. Places where you have very cramped stairs, like um, the Netherlands has lots of this. They have really, really cramped staircases because they have those large three, four story townhouses that are really skinny. So what they do is they have narrow steps, but they're like also steep. They're about twice as high. And once again, if you look at the original here, you can see that the each stair is about twice as long as it is high. Whereas on yours, each stair is about the same length and height. So that's just a, a small niggle, but it's something you want to look at. Uh, the next thing I would say to work on would be the lighting, specifically this background image here that you've used for the outside is too dim. If you take a look at architectural pictures of apartments, Something that you'll notice almost every time from these sorts of views is that the brightest point in the render is almost or in the photograph is almost always the window. So you want to brighten those up. I mean, if we just go in even with like the dodge in real life, the windows would probably look something more like this. They would look really washed out. You're not going to get a situation where you have like go back to the way this was. 
this poster over here is much brighter than the view from outside and it doesn't really look right. Like the sky should be the brightest point because everything's being lit by the sky. So that's something that you want to be aware of as well. One last thing that you might want to just work on here is your texturing. You've, the actual texture in itself is very good, but the materials, these look very fake to me. I think it's the scale of the wood and the colour. I would try and add a little bit of variance to this wood so each one doesn't look exactly the same. Darken them down a little bit, and the same with the wall. The scale of the wall looks a bit large to me. You might want to make everything look a little bit more compact. Because at the moment, it makes the wall look incredibly rough. I feel like if I ran my hand down that wall, it would take all the skin off my hand. But overall, this is a really, really good render. If you keep going the way you have been going so far, you're going to be doing very, very good work very soon. Jarno submitted this render and he said, Hi, still pretty new to Blender. This is a little something I made. Well, Jarno, this is fantastic. This is really good work. In terms of realism, you've got a cracked sun. This looks really good. Um, you've got this like tilt shift effect going on that makes everything look like a like a mon like a model or a miniature. I'm not sure if that's what you were aiming for. I, I assume you were because it's quite hard to accidentally do, and that looks really cool. You've also got chromatic aberrations in the image, which is this like color splitting you get from lens distortion that really helps to sell realism, and that looks good. The depth of field in general, you've got this blurred section down the side close to the camera. All of that is fantastic. The bad parts, however, first of all, I can't tell what time of day this is. I can't tell if this is a nighttime render, day, is it like late evening? That's not a good sign in a render. That's something you want to fix straight away. The first thing you can do to fix that is if I just auto contrast this. I noticed earlier on straight away that image right so it's daytime roughly but it's like darkish hours regardless of the time in a major city like new york this is park avenue looking at grand central station i believe you're going to have lights on in all these windows what i would do is i would select random planes and i would just add an emission material to them or even better than that, what you can do is you can get photographs of inside offices and you can just quickly apply them to the, the windows so it looks like there's actual things inside the buildings. That's what they did for the Avengers. The final battle scene for the Avengers, everything that you see in New York wasn't filmed there. All of the battle that takes place on this little bridge part here was actually the entire city block was recreated in 3D and they photographed thousands and thousands of different office buildings and then had them automatically generate on each one of the windows obviously you don't need to go that far but if you just add a few office buildings and things at least the close ones it, that could look really cool also on the street you would expect there to be like you know street lights and things like that you would expect traffic lights to have a little bit of color maybe some red and green lights going on um some cars there would be brake lights on some of these cars where people have are like pumping the brakes and things at the back so just a few little lights in there would help to sell this really well also something that sticks out like a, th a sore thumb is the fact that you've got all these taxi cabs that are bright yellow but every single other car in the scene is dark color and it instantly becomes obvious that it's the same cars just sort of duplicated over and over again what i would consider doing is adding some sort of node setup that would automatically just give a different color to each car because the human eye is very very good at noticing patterns and when you notice that every car is the same it instantly breaks the illusion and if you look at this for a second you realize that this 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 and this they're all the same car these are the exact same car if these were just random different colours, I wouldn't have noticed that necessarily, especially from this distance. I do actually have a video on how you can automatically assign different colours to car, um, to materials, so you might want to check that out. But apart from that, this is really, really good work, Jano. Keep it up. So this render came in from Gustavo, and he said, Have my latest render, looking for ways to improve, especially on the materials. And then he gave us a link to his portfolio on Instagram. 
First of all, Gustavo, this is another one. I really love this render. I think it's very charming. I like this a lot. Um, there is some things you can work on though, so we're going to go through those now. First of all, from a composition point of view, I think there's a few things that you could improve on here. Um, this character, the pose, everything about it composition-wise, I think you've nailed it. This is really good. You've got like a three-quarter pose here where he's not quite looking at the camera and he's not quite looking from the side on. This character, however, even though it, it does look very good, by the way, it's kind of let down by the fact that it's looking perfectly to the side. It's looking this way. And you want it to be looking kind of this way, ideally, or the opposite direction. So I would work on maybe changing character poses and things. Maybe have them lie in the same way, but looking towards the camera. That could be really cool. Um, also, while we're talking about composition, what you might want to consider is the rule of thirds when you're working on a piece. Basically, the rule of thirds means that if you split your canvas into thirds like this way and this way, the points where these meet are generally the best focal points for your image. They're where your eyes naturally go to on an image. So I've got this picture here and you can see that you almost line up with the focal points. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to just change this image of yours. Right, if we just play around with this a little bit and move it to say here, you can see that now the face, the hand, this face here and even the corner of this netting all line up with the focal point. So compositionally, your eyes are straight away just going to go one, two, three, four, not necessarily in that order, but these are the places your eyes are going to be drawn to. The places where you want people's eyes to be drawn to anyway. Also, um, if I just press Control, Shift and L, I think it is, I would change the contrast a little bit because at the moment it's getting a little bit washed out and that's letting your materials down. Now, you did specifically say you wanted help with materials and... I think at the moment everything looks a little bit too dry. I would consider bringing down the roughness on some of these materials, especially this animal here, because I, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a sea creature. So generally speaking, you would expect it to be wet. Right now it looks like it's bone dry and it looks like it's made out of the same material as the rock. The rock also looks very dry. I would consider bringing the roughness right down on that so you get a nice little bit of like shine on the back and um, this hat as well it looks very plastic at the moment it looks like it's straight out of toy story it's actually very good the hat to be honest but it does look very very plasticky and if that's not what you're going for you might want to change that the only other thing i would say about modeling and materials is this hole here looks very weird you wouldn't normally get a hole like that in actual fabric because you would be able to see some of the fabric at the back at the same time. You wouldn't get like a perfect hole like that unless someone had cut it out. What I would do, if you want to add holes to the character, to the uh, the clothing, is I would probably add more of them. I would add like tears and rips and maybe add loads of dirty marks and wear to the clothes so it looks like he's like really raggy. So all his clothes look messed up because it's it's a bit strange at the moment, the fact that he's just got this one tear mark in the clothes and then all the rest of his clothing looks perfect. It looks immaculate. But apart from that, I'm, I really, really like this render. I think this is very good. So I hope that gives you something to think about and you can maybe work into your next render. So this piece here was submitted by Mike. He said, hey mate, here's a little video from an absolute beginner. I watched the video and Mike is an absolute beginner. This is the first thing he ever made in Blender. This isn't bad work, Mike. It's really not. This is a good little start you've made there. First thing I would say, from an artistic point of view, whenever you're making something like this, you want to really set the scene. You want to make people feel like they're there. And a lot of the time that just comes down to add more detail. So this is obviously a nighttime scene. So the first thing I would have done is got rid of this gray background. I would have made the whole scene a lot darker and had a black background. So you get these harsh shadows, a strong light lighting everything up and keeping all the nice high details, but then like dark drop shadows everywhere else. You've got this nice shadowing off the lamppost here. I would maybe move the lamppost a little bit further in so you can see more of that and you would get a really cool look. 
same thing for setting the scene. Um, every skate park I've ever seen has looked dirty. There's graffiti, there's, you know, random cans and bits of trash and stuff lying around. I would add things like that into it just because it makes it feel more lived in. You can sort of feel like you're there a little bit more. Compositionally as well, you might also want to just consider changing the crop on this image. Like, you could get away with zooming in on this a little bit more. It's a really common mistake for beginners, and I used to do this as well, just to have too much empty space around the side. You want to zoom in as much as possible to your object so you don't end up with all this random empty space. Now, from a technical point of view, nothing you did was really, really bad, but you did use a Boolean with a cylinder to cut out the shape, which isn't really necessary and isn't the best way to do your workflow you want to avoid booleans as much as possible because it makes it more complicated to model later on and it also introduces weird artifacts like you can see here you've got these lines coming across and what i'll do is i'll quickly jump into blender and i'll show you how i would model something like this because the other problem with using a boolean is you've got this sort of perfect circle shape over here which isn't really accurate to how a quarter pipe would actually look. So I've got this reference image here of an actual quarter pipe with the measurements. What I'm going to do is just grab this back on the Y axis, move this into place, and I'm going to add in a cube. I'm going to go to wireframe mode, press one so I can move the verts, and then I'm just going to move these roughly into place. I'll just really quickly do this. Right, and then I would select this edge over here. Right, select this edge. And in front view, if I press Ctrl and B, that uses the bevel tool. And the bevel tool, what it does is it just makes a cut that goes straight across a corner. And I can move it so it goes all the way to the edges. And I can add more cuts to it. Like this. And then we can play with the profile. So we can alter the profile here until it gets a pretty close. It's not going to be exact because it is an exact curve, but we can get it pretty close to this reference image like this. And straight away that looks a bit more realistic. Then what we can do is select everything with A, press Ctrl and M by distance. That gets rid of some random verts. You don't really need to worry about that. And then go to Face and Shade Smooth. What that'll do is those random lines that you've got from the geometry, that's going to get rid of those. But now you can see it's introduced this weird shade. To fix that, all you need to do is press this green icon here, the three dots in a triangle. Go to normals and auto smooth. And then you'll get this really nice smooth geometry, even though we haven't got loads of cuts. We could have actually used less than that. You're going to get this really nice geometry. But yeah, Mike, that's a really good start. I'm impressed if that's your first Blender render that isn't bad at all. Okay, so thank you to all the artists who submitted their work for this episode. I really appreciate it. And I hope you found the feedback helpful. We had some really interesting pieces of art this week. If you'd like to submit your work for the next episode of this, which is probably going to be in two weeks' time, what you want to do is check the description box on this video. Underneath the like and subscribe button, there'll be a Facebook link. That Facebook link will be for a Facebook post that you can reply to with your renders. I'll go through that in a couple of weeks time and I'll pick out a few random renders from there and I'll do a critique session on those. Unfortunately, I might not be able to get around to doing everybody's, but I will try and do as many as possible. I hope you liked this video guys and you found all my advice helpful. If you did, hit all the nice buttons below and I'll see you in a few days time for the next video. Jesus, this needs a trim. So what happens when you don't leave the house for three weeks? Look like fucking Captain Caveman. So thanks to everybody who sent me their blenders. Sent me their blenders? Sent me their renders? Yeah, it's cold. Right. Also, another thing that you want to concentrate... Dog. Car horn.
Neighbours gate. Neighbours kids screaming. Is there any other miscellaneous noise? Has someone got like a soundboard here? Like helicopter, rocket launch. Mm-hmm. <laughs>